In this video we will be looking at real number properties. As much as I hate to memorize things, I must admit that in this case here are some properties that you will need to memorize. So there's a few of them and so be prepared. Uh, the first properties we'll look at, there's an addition version and a multiplication version. Not a subtraction version or a division version as you'll see uh, an example of subtraction that doesn't work. And the first property we're going to look at is the commutative property. I don't really have a good way to tell you how you can uh, remember which is the commutative property. I think of maybe commuting and maybe that means um, moving around. But in the commutative property there's a change in order. Things get moved. So for example for addition 2 plus 3, the result you get when you add them in that order is the same as when you reverse the order. 3 plus 2. That is an example of the commutative property. You will need to be able to see an example like that and identify it. Notice, however, that 2 minus 3 is not the same as 3 minus 2. And so there is not a, a commutative property for subtraction. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, 3 minus 2 is positive 1. But for multiplication there is a commutative property. 2 times 3, if you multiply numbers in that order, you get the same thing as 3 times 2. By the way, uh, these, real n these properties apply to all real numbers and uh, I'm just using simple positive integers as examples here, but I could be using any real number or numbers. The next property we're going to look at is the associative property and there's no change in order with the associative property. Let's take three numbers and let's add them together. Once again we're keeping it very simple. 2 plus 3 plus 4 and I should get the same result. If I write 2 plus 3 plus 4 on the other side. But what I want to do is group them differently. I like to add the first two first and then the third. And in the second case I'd like to add the second and third to the first. And I'll get the same result. 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 is 9 and 2 plus 7 is 9. Same thing works for multiplication. If I group the first two, 2 times 3 times 4, I get the same result as 2 times 3 times 4. 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24. Here I have 12 times 2 is also 24. Same result, that's an example of the associative property. And now I would like to show you probably the most missed uh, example of these properties. It's uh, not a identified properly frequently on tests. And here's what this looks like. Which property is this indicating here? Well if you look really quickly and you look at the parentheses you might think it's the associative property. But remember there should be no change in order and we do have a change in order here. So it is not the associative property and as a matter of fact if you look you'll see that the, the order did get changed. The 2 plus 3 got put into the end so what we really have here is the commutative property. There's a change in order and this is an example of the commutative property. That type of problem is missed frequently, so be aware of that. The order changed, it is the commutative property. The next property we, we would like to look at is the identity property. Identity, I think of identical. 
3 equals 3. That's identical. What would I need to add to 3 to get 3? Well, I'd add 0. 3 plus 0 is equal to 3. 0 is the additive identity element. And if you see an example of that, you should be able to identify that as the identity property of addition. Let's take a look at it for multiplication. What would I need to multiply 3 by to get 3? 1. And so 1 is the identity element for multiplication. Next property is the inverse property. And the inverse property is we would like to start out with a number and somehow get the identity element. So for addition, let's start out with 3 again. And we would like to somehow end up with the result of 0, which is the identity element. What would I have to add to that? Well, I could just add its opposite, 3 plus negative 3. And negative 3 is also called the additive inverse. How about for multiplication? What would I need to multiply 3 by to get its identity element for multiplication, which is 1? 3 times its reciprocal would give me 1. So if you see a case of this, this is a case of the inverse property. There's one other property that applies only to multiplication. It's called the zero factor. And instead of property, it gets the name law, zero factor law. And in this case, if I started out with some number, say 3 again, how could I get 0? I would have to multiply it by 0. So 3 times 0 is equal to 0. And 0 times 3 equals 0. This is the zero factor law. The last property we will look at involves both addition and multiplication. And this property is called the, it has a long name. It's the distributive property. Distributive property of multiplication over addition. So it's the distributive property of multiplication over addition. And what does an example of this look like? Let's write a, uh, we would like to take a the product of a number and a sum. So 2 times 3 plus 4 is a good example. And we'll distribute. The 2 distributes to the 3, and it also distributes to the 4. And so this is equal to, if we take the product of the numbers first that are inside the, the parentheses, in other words, 2 times the 3, plus 2 times the 4 will get the same result that way than if we did it with the addition first and then the multiplication. There are the properties. I'm afraid you're going to have to memorize them. Good luck.